good morning to everyone at the outset i give all glory and honor to our lord and savior jesus christ for materializing this association function i greet all in this august occasion at the inaugural function of physics association 2020 21 let us begin the session with a prayer song there shall be showers of blessing to invoke god's Showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be sweet and refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops from the suffering. But for the showers we bleed, there shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again, over the hills and the valleys, sound of permanence of rain, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops from the star falling, but for the showers we bleed. There shall be showers of blessing, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now by refreshing, come and now warn us, Thy God. Showers of blessing. Showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops from the suffering, but for the showers we bleed. But for the showers we bleed. But for the showers we bleed. Today we have an eminent resource person, Dr. Vijay Solomon, Assistant Professor of Chemistry, working at Madras Christian College, Chennai, to deliver a talk on quantum mechanics and its applications. Walt Disney says, "We keep moving forward, opening new doors, and doing new things because we are curious, and curiosity." Keeps leading us down new paths. I hope that today's message will serve as a catalyst for strengthening our thoughts in quantum mechanics and transfer of innovative technology. When I invited Dr. Vijay Solomon to be the resource person for this inaugural function of Physics Association, he readily accepted. Amidst his busy schedule, his wife, Dr. Kirba Vijay, is a alumni. She did her undergraduate course in our department and continued her M.Sc. and Ph.D. in Karnia Institute of Technology. She has a high regard for all the staff of our department. I'm so happy with her, Dr. Vijay Solomon. Did his postdoctoral studies in the University of Basel, Switzerland, and has become the postdoctoral associate from the University of South Carolina, USA. I welcome you, sir. I heartily welcome our dynamic HOD and associate professor of physics, Mrs. Jagadi Jasmine. She is easily approachable. And offers a best learning environment. I welcome you, ma'am. 
I also welcome Dr. Ramila Pechodi, an associate professor in the unaided wing. I do welcome her. I also welcome all the enthusiastic colleagues of my department who always encourage and support in all my endeavors. They give timely guidance in the need of the art. I take pleasure in welcoming all the young and energetic students who crave for knowledge. Now, our Physics Association Secretary, Ms. Subhashini of 3rd BSc Physics, will introduce the resource person. Good morning, sir. It's my great privilege to introduce our esteemed speaker of the day, Dr. Vijay Solomon, sir. His academic career ranges from research to teaching, from Tirunal Valley to Trichy, from Trichy to University of Basel and Lausanne in Switzerland, from Switzerland to California and Pittsburgh in US, from US to Noida, and then back to Chennai, spanning across shining seven years. Sir has pursued his UG and PG in the field of chemistry with first class and first class with distinction respectively. Sir has done an interesting thesis on the topic of designing molecules for opera electronic applications and probing halogen bonds in base pairs. This thesis fetched him doctorate from Barbidasan University. During his illustrated career, Sir has published 27 research papers. His research paper, A New Turn in Codon Anticodon Selection Through Halogen Bonds, has an impact factor of 4.89, which is a great one. Sir has also addressed four various conferences as resource person. For his exemplary service to the field of chemistry, Sir has been a Swiss government excellence for the year 2012 to 2013 and worked with renowned professor M. Newley, University of Basel. He has also been a senior research fellow under Maulina Azad National Fellowship from Union Grants Commission. The latest feather in Sir's cap is his PG in Chem Informatics from IS, ICIS Noida. Sir's efforts were recognized and rightly rewarded with CNR Rao Young Scientist Award by Bose Science Society. He is currently working as Associate Professor of Chemistry at Madras Christian College enlightening the minds of future pillars of our country. As I said earlier, we are very lucky to have a person of Sir stature to grace today's webinar. Thank you, Suboshni. Now, Sir, I welcome you to present that. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. I thank uh, uh, Dr. Jay Mangla, ma'am, for inviting me to be a part of this uh, association function. And um, I'll start with good morning, Saras. Yeah. So I hope uh, we uh, meet virtually, but still I feel it's a good platform to go ahead. And I thank Department of Physics because my better half from your department, Dr. Kirba, who also joined here. Uh, just to uh, see and you know uh, recollecting her memories with the faculty members and she always uh, loved the department of physics so encouraging and uh, you know uh, that department set the tone for her in doing excellence in research so i thank and uh, i i owe my thanks for that also okay so uh, let us start is my screen visible no, sir. No, sir. No. Just a minute. Uh, I think I am presenting to everyone. Can others see? Did you yes. see my PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. I mean, yeah, able to see. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, okay. So, very happy to see you all again and uh, i thank uh, lord almighty for giving me this opportunity to be here in this pandemic situation and uh, i thank god for each and everyone who gathered here and uh, this talk is not going to be very technical and i thought uh, as a chemist 
as a chemistry person and i would like to talk something to the physics then i thought which one can overlap with physics to greater extent of course i teach physical chemistry in general for ug and pg and i thought quantum mechanics that uh, you know came to my mind that okay we will talk something on quantum mechanics and i i know uh, when we say quantum mechanics people used to uh, remember that psi and complex equations and so on so uh, i thought let me not bore with the same stuff again here but i would like to bring uh, some of the insights that i derived from the quantum mechanics when i started taking quantum mechanics though my phd is from quantum mechanics but i love quantum mechanics more when i started teaching quantum mechanics here in pg in mcc so with that understanding i thought of you know uh, talking some of the fascinating aspects that uh, uh, one can get from quantum mechanics and i really want uh, to take you all through the era of 1900 to 1940 because that was the early days of quantum mechanics and uh, when i just look back uh, history will always give a broad smile to us and let us just enjoy uh that uh, flavor here uh, through this lecture and uh, i hope and i believe i will do the justice to the opportunity that is given okay so i'll start with this uh he is a person dirac who got nobel prize in 1934 uh, uh, with schrodinger uh, for his work on atom models and so on he gave his famous uh sentence or quote in 1929 he said the underlying physical laws necessary for the mathematical theory for a large part of physics i would say that physics so in that time you know uh, physics large part of physics and the whole of chemistry okay or that's completely known they said yes we can go ahead and the difficulty is only that the exact application of these laws leads to equations much too complicated to be soluble so soluble okay so in that sense we can understand and analyze any sort of system only thing is we need to bring everything into the mathematics and uh, those equations are very complex to solve if we solve that definitely we can explore a lot of things that was a, a famous quote that he gave in 1929 coming back to quantum mechanics and this is a picture or uh, this is the first page of the google when Google celebrated that uh, birth of quantum mechanics on December 14 um in one of the years so I took this picture from internet and it symbolically represents that it is a psi you know we are all familiar with that psi whether you like it or not psi will follow you and they have given a, a ghost figure and there are many equations psi psi star uh, dw dv something like that so the ghost of psi will always follow you Uh, whether you are a physics physicist or a chemist uh, we cannot avoid this fellow uh, so google rightly dedicated this image to uh, celebrate the uh, quantum mechanics or birth of quantum mechanics and this is an important person max planck and his mantra of success is uh, persevere and continue working okay that is the mantra but rightly uh, if you look at that uh, his career uh, which span uh, a lot of ups and downs but uh, one important thing we can take out of uh, his life is his professor warned him not to go to physics go into physics and he said in this field almost everything is already discovered and all that remains is to fill a few holes he said in 1880s so just think about 1880s uh, his uh, teacher said don't go to physics don't spoil the subject okay uh, i can see i can i can visualize some of you are started smiling about this statement and uh, but that is definitely not applicable to you your professors will all always helpful and encourage you to pursue your career in physics but that is what uh, happened to max planck but he chose to be in physics and he came up with the beautiful concept of planck's constant and we will see the history how the history has uh, you know evolved over the years in this particular field then if you think about research and uh, we cannot avoid light bible says in genesis 1 3 and god said let there be light and there was light so light is very very important god has given importance to light and when you start thinking about equations physics or thermodynamics anything light is an avoidable thing right so the first research is started with the word or with the theme light 
it happened in 1803 when Thomas Young studied about the nature of light uh, by observing diffraction interference and he said that yes wave has I mean light has a wave nature and in after 60 years around 1864 James Clark Maxwell came up with four equations mainly he unified um, uh, electric as well as the magnetic field with the word electromagnetic or electromagnetism and um, he said that uh, an accelerated electric charge would radiate energy in the form of electromagnetic waves consisting of oscillating electric and magnetic fields he said in 1864 that was one of the remarkable milestones in the whole of science i would say the whole of science in 1888 when uh, radio waves are produced by an electric uh, accelerated electric charges in a spark uh, which once again confirms that yes uh, the light has a wave nature this happened in 1888 so far so good people are happy with classical mechanics and which is applicable to the macro molecules uh, the macroscopic part is fine but the real problem uh, came into picture when we enter into 1890s when the problem of black body radiation people are started studying about the specific heat capacity of various elements metals and uh, whenever they try to apply the classical mechanics it miserably fails so in 1896 Wayne came up with the beautiful formula at which is an empirical formula uh, which connects black body radiation and the temperature okay so he came up with that and he applied to certain systems and uh, he got a very good fit for the values that he got from the experiments and he said wow i got something to do here and uh, but it got some uh, deviations from uh, certain experiments and max Cla max planck uh, came into the picture and he said, yeah, I, I'm going to correct a few things. And he added a few terms into the Wayne's equation. And now the Wayne's equation is very good. But all these things are a preliminary one. The breakthrough, I would say, in the quantum mechanics field happens in 1900, December 14, when Planck's discussed about his equations, his thoughts on energy elements. And he came up with the number uh, something called a Planck's constant. At that time, he didn't uh, say that it is a Planck's constant. It is say that a numerical constant, and he gave a value for that. And uh, and since then, you know, a, a dramatic change around happened in science because at that time only the electron was uh, discovered in 1898. The tiny particle, of course, uh, proton uh, in 1980s, 1898. Um, we have electron and the neutron much later but all these things are subatomic particles or atomic particles which are very tiny in nature so the whole course of research is uh, taken a uh, back and taken a, a u-turn to look at that a new field is born 1905 einstein borrowed few concepts from max planck i would say uh, einstein is a devoted uh, shishya of uh, uh, planck because he borrowed the concept of quantization and uh, he introduced, uh, 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 you know, the concept of photons, even though he uh, he got Nobel Prize for his pioneering work in explaining the photoelectric effect in 1905. 1902, the photoelectric effect uh, was discovered. So he got Nobel Prize for the explanation of the photoelectric effect. So light is composed of particle-like entities, photons, he gave the name. And then he used the quantization concept, the quantize, the quanta, the word is given by Planck and Einstein is capitalized that and energy quantization to the vibrations of atoms in solids. So this is a chronological order. Uh, if you look at that, the step-by-step -step process in that. But so far, if you look at that, everything is applicable to the atoms or uh, I would say the small elements and so on. But nobody has ever thought of what would be the structure of atom. Okay. So if you look at that, I just plotted a timeline here. We can say that in 19, 1890s, we have a black body radiation that actually occupies a central role uh, uh, among the researchers. Why, why, why things are there like that? Then specific heat capacity of the material. These two things are, um, uh, you know, giving a tough time to the scientists. But after the Planck's concept of the quantum mechanics or the quanta, or energy entities, energy elements, and then Einstein joined hand with Planck's, um, uh, you know, idea, and he builds from there the idea of quantization and so on. So if you look at the 1905, he got the 
um, this uh, photo uh, electric effect the explanation then 1909 rutherford came up with the atomic model okay before that 1904 we have plum pudding model by jj thompson then rutherford uh, came with the 1909 the his famous model uh, planet and then uh, you can have bohr's model of atom in 1930 i would say 1912 to 1913 and de broglie came into picture in 1923 to discuss about uh, the wave and the particle nature and heisenberg he helped us in coming coming up with matrix mechanics at the same time or more or less similar uh, time schrodinger came up with the wave mechanics then we had a beautiful conference on uh, on um, uh, in, in the year 1927 in the name of solvay congress where many famous scientists gathered together and discuss about uh, the developments in the atomic model because that was a huge discussion uh was going on what is the atom what is the subatomic particles and very few people are working in the world and all people came together to discuss about the the fate of the atom and in that time only we have a great debate and discussion and so on with bohr and einstein and if you are happen to go to google and type bohr einstein debates you can have uh, interesting facts uh and you know arguments among uh, the bohr and einstein and other fellow then 1928 we have a quantum electrodynamics from dirac and 1929 the molecular orbital theory came into picture and from there on no turning back we are marching towards with the understanding of what has happened from 1900 to 1930s or 1940s so this lecture i would like to give a overview about what exactly happened in quantum mechanics starting from 1900 to 1940 or 44 and so on okay and uh, i'll just give some of the applications of that because most of the time uh, we are happy in deriving equations and but we do not really know why we are deriving all those things if you take any uh, sort of dis, uh, of derivation like rigid rotor harmonic oscillator hydrogen atom and helium atom and so on okay so we will see that and if you look at that um uh, dalton came up with the concept of atom in the year 18 or oh, three okay and in tamil we used to say that avanindi oru anuvam asayadu so that atom uh, that anu was there even before that but 1803 oh, only dalton proposes there's a tiny uh, element in this universe that is nothing but atom then 1911 rutherford demonstrates uh, that existence of positive charge nucleus by uh, you know uh, giving um, the rays and 1913 we got bohr with the atomic model and uh, 1926 we got some picture about how the atom would be so this is like the trend from 1900 to 1926 about a quarter century of research work devoted to the atom model if you look at the nobel prize uh, winners in those time whatever uh, people did in quantum they got the nobel prize because that actually establishes the understanding about the atom a tiny particle the new elements new entities enter into the science field now i just give a, uh, um, a flow chart about a few of the scientists who have contributed richly in this field but we will start with the jj thompson there are plenty of uh, um, you know facts about that jj thompson is a supervisor of both niels bohr and rutherford initially niels bohr joined with jj thompson and then he had a fight with jj thompson then i say no i don't want to join i don't want to work with you then he joined with uh, ian rutherford he is again a student of uh, jj thompson and again he had a fight when he proposes a model he said no 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 i cannot accept your model so i want to propose my own model so therefore if you look at that 19 uh, 10 um 10 to 11 you can have a rutherford model and uh, bohr 12 to 13 he came up with that on the other hand we have a max planck as i said that most of the ideas uh, that he derived einstein derived from max planck and uh, till last uh, of his life you know he wanted to apprise max ideas okay and then uh, we had a bohr einstein debates in 1927 on atomic models and various uh, aspects uh, niels bohr's student is heisenberg we know heisenberg got nobel prize in 1933 not for his um, uncertainty principle but for the creation of quantum mechanics 
the word quantum mechanics and this is the first time he got nobel prize and uh, schrodinger again he got nobel prize schrodinger and uh, dirac both joined nobel prize in the year um in the year 1934 okay it's, it was a shared nobel prize between um, uh, the schrodinger and uh, dirac so schrodinger was eventually not happy with that because the nobel prize money was shared and he claimed that he was the one who introduces the quantum mechanics not the heisenberg even though both are working on the same problem and uh, one is using matrix he is so good in matrix and uh, evin schrodinger came up with the wave mechanics so that is the idea and uh, if you look at that the scientists those who are uh, working in that field at that time everybody had a healthy discussion when it comes to the subject okay now the, there are plenty of ego around that but the ecosystem was very good now this is how the uh, board will look like after a quantum mechanics less how many of you have witnessed i do not know this is how my board will look like after uh, two hours of continuous uh, class in quantum mechanics there are plenty of that and if you look at that the students will tell why are we so interested in deriving all those equations and we are happy with the equation uh, and we are happy with the derivation integration differentiation and so on but why are we doing that we will not know so always there is a conflict uh, uh, between the student and teacher and just sit back and see so the teacher asked the student to do no, right so the student did that and then well you told us to draw what we see under the microscope this is how the things will go if uh, uh, you know a better understanding is not there between the teacher and the student and so on now looking at the big picture quantum mechanics is a very vast subject and uh, we'll have a lot of trouble in understand the concepts okay so this uh, lecture i thought of giving uh, taking a basic examples and i'll try to correlate with the lives and which is backed up with some of the historical events and some analogies okay this is a story uh, it was six blind men to learning much inclined who want to see the elephant okay so each one is very thrilled to see how uh, the elephant will be or uh, 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 how it should be like that the first one approached the elephant and uh, you know um, he just touch that you know the broad area of the body and then he said wow it's like a wall so he said that god bless me but the elephant is very like a wall and the second one uh just touching the tusk of the elephant and you know wow this is good this is like uh, yeah, very round and smooth and sharp uh to me it might my mighty clear uh, this wonder of an elephant is very like a sphere the third one is touching the trunk and uh, the third approach the animal and uh, just look at that the trunk and then touch that and he felt wow i see the elephant is very like a snake the fourth one touches the feet and then just the leg part he touches that and he saw that wow it's very uh, thick and it's like a tree the fifth one happened to touch the ears and then say wow this is very thin somebody said it is very bulky but it is not like it's like a fan the next one like no 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 who said it is very thick or uh, then this is like a rope touching the tail of the elephant if you look at that all these blind men uh, uh, were express their feeling about their sense of touching and they said that whatever they said everything is fine from their end though each was partly in the right and if you look at that all were in the wrong elephant is not like a wall it's not like a spear not like a snake not like a tree not like a fan not like a rope so the moral is each of these men has touched the elephant and has got some idea about elephant not one of them has seen it so this is applicable to quantum mechanics when you think about the quantum mechanics as a big picture we need to have different elements from different parts and we have to integrate and we want to see the whole picture with that understanding let us move from here now we talked about the materials then we talked about the atom atom model 
and if you look at that that is fine once the atom is over then the next bigger entity in a system is molecule okay so we need to go for molecules if you think about molecules we have to have two atoms connected with a bond when you have chemical bond you you might have studied about the covalent bond covalent bond is nothing but share of pair of electrons so when two electrons are shared and there will be a chemical bond and the two atoms are connected and if you look at the simple example of h2o we know that h o o whenever you have three atoms you have a two bonds and so on if you take a benzene ring okay and we have six atoms and uh, hydrogen atoms are there and so on when you have uh, many atoms multi atoms then we can have bond if you have bond there can be stretching so people are started understanding about the vibrations and vibrations stretching plays a important role where a bond length is changing bond length is changing the next one is bending again it includes three atoms and bending is uh, uh, giving a change in the bond angle the third one is rotation so quantum mechanics is, uh, is happy with only the atoms at that point then people are started thinking about what happens when atoms are connected together to form a bond when you have a bond we will have a stretching when you have three atoms there will be a bending when you have so many atoms you will have rotation so we have a rotation we need to account for we need to look at the vibrations and we need to locate uh, we need to uh, look into the stretching bending rotation and so on so all these things we need to take so that a complete picture of the molecule can be given to uh, anyone so there are three types of interaction between bonded atoms as i said stretching then bending and rotating and quantum mechanics or any sort of theories that should account for all those things will give a complete picture otherwise the picture is not complete it is incomplete therefore people are started looking at the system and try to derive equations corresponding to the behavior of atoms and molecules schrodinger came he is a very important uh, person in, uh, in quantum mechanics and he came up with the famous equation and h psi equal to e psi okay i'm not worrying about the other aspects of the schrodinger equation in a very simple term i try to avoid the equations here in this uh, lecture and uh, what is hamiltonian hamiltonian we have a hamiltonian is given here what is hamiltonian here and then you have energy component and you have a wave function so psi is called wave function we will see now schrodinger worked with that uh, time dependent schrodinger wave equation and then he bombarded the hamiltonian which is a operator with the kinetic energy as well as potential energy so that the total energy operator can be obtained and in quantum mechanics that we have one dimension and three dimension you might have uh, done these things when you derive schrodinger wave equation but the point here is the potential term makes one problem different from another hydrogen atom harmonic oscillator and so on so we need to know what is the potential term there are many terms available uh, we will mainly concentrate on potential term but looking at the wave function and you might have studied about the properties of wave function what is a well behaved wave function it should have a single value it should be continuous and so on so if you look at this picture if uh, it this correspond to the uh, uh, actor rajnikant and over the years he has been there in the cine field and if you look at the wave function should predict the past present and future wave function should be reliable wave function should give the real picture and so on so if we have the capability of finding out the wave function following the wave function at different occasions we can follow the system that is understanding so if we can follow rajnikanth of course from the different pictures we can see that how he was and how he is and how he will be all these things are the part of wave function so we need to get a good wave function so that the properties can be predicted so that is understanding so operators we have seen the wave function we have seen now look at the 1d box uh, this is a different question in your in your end of semester examination you might have done that there will be a huge potential wall and outside that the potential energy is infinity and inside it is zero and you have a length o 0 to l okay 
if you look at that this is uh, very important in quantum mechanics because this will give an understanding about the tiny particle which are there in the system for example let us take carbon carbon single bond if you look at that the bond the bonded electrons are two electrons shared between cc atoms now these two electrons cannot move away from that it cannot go out of the two carbon atoms so these two carbon atoms are considered as the huge walls and this particular uh, electrons are trapped inside that so this is nothing but this 1d box so 1d box if we can predict the behavior of this electron between this carbon and this carbon then we can find the property of the bond so the same thing is applicable to here if you have a particle trapped inside the box and this behavior can be mathematically uh, predicted and we can derive the equation suppose you have a bigger system like conjugated system a cc single bond double bond single bond double bond and so on if this is a case and the pi electrons can move from one place to other place so now the same thing is applicable the electron cannot go away from the molecule but the length will vary initially we have 0 to l in a small quantity like between the two carbon atoms now it spans over different carbon atoms so understanding the 1d box will help us to uh, look at the tiny particles like electrons behavior in a chemical bond and i said that we need to understand the bonding so that the properties can be predicted so 1d box is very very helpful and if you look at that the energy and this you might have done energy and with the different levels 1 2 3 and 4 so we can say that the energy in different levels like excited state when the molecule when the molecule gets energy it will go to the excited state and how the molecule will behave in the excited state that can also be predicted with that now i'll just give a simple question this is like the the, the terms state and energy level these two are often confused by the students so if you look at the energy is greater than 15 this is one of the csar question uh, in recent years how many states lie in this range and how many energy levels lie in this range so we can say that for a cubic box now we will move on to 1d box to 3d box and uh, you can say that the energy systems we can say 3 6 6 6 9 9 9 11 11 12 12 13 13 14 14 15 15 16 16 17 17 18 18 19 19 20 20 21 21 22 22 23 23 and so on now if you look at that this as the energy we can predict by e uh is got 8 ma square by h square and if you look at that 1 1 1 2 1 1 1 and so on these are the states so we can have you know same energy but different states so we call that as a degeneracy so this is a implication of 1d box and this has a huge application in spectroscopy when people are studying about their behavior in excited state and different states involved and complex mechanism can also be solved with 1d box and 3d box that is the application of 1d box and 3d box now the next important application i would say this quantum tunneling okay this is a famous phenomena that happens uh, uh, that came into picture in 1930s when people are worrying about certain things where classical physics failed uh, for example if you want to say that a particle from here should move to the upper part of the potential energy diagram we'll call this as a energy here and this is a product now one has to climb the hill so that we can just roll the ball here and we can get this but uh, eventually in in some uh, cases by nature that is not at all possible but still this particular a is becoming b so people are coming up with a new term called quantum tunneling so tunnel through the energy barrier a classical example is inversion of ammonia ammonia you know n you have a h h h and this can be interconvertible to go to this is like a umbrella which is inverted in, in the nature like that and this so if this is a case uh this is very tough to understand because it has a huge potential barrier from here if you look at that 
uh, structure one and here it is having the structure two so if you look at that this has to cross this barrier but actually this is very easy in uh, uh, in reality it is actually tunnel through the barrier so it does not want to cross the barrier instead it is like breach through the barrier so this is a uh, um uh yeah example for quantum tunneling and the most famous example is the mechanism by which scanning tunneling electron microscope works it uses tunnelings of electrons through the space between the extremely fine tip of the uh, metal uh, surface metal uh, rod as well as the surface the surface of an electrically conducting solid produces image of and then if you look at the the tiny uh, uh, tip is touching or about to touch the surface and there you can have uh, a small voltage when small voltage is applied between the solid and the wire and the tip is moved across and surface is plotted and we used to get the beautiful morphology of material courtesy to quantum tunneling so we need to have quantum effects in different uh, uh, you know uh, systems now quantum tunneling in enzyme catalyzed uh, reactions of course many reactions we used to have quantum tunneling the biggest bio factory i would say is a human body on a daily basis there are millions of reactions are taking place you take some juice or you take some idli or something like immediately it has to go to a, a rigorous process of uh, the digestive uh, uh, mechanism and many reactions are happening biochemical reactions if you really want to do in a real system very tough but courtesy to quantum tunneling because it violates the nature and it breach through the barrier and make complicated things into a very simpler way so that has a huge effect on that and moving on to the vibrational modes if you look at that harmonic oscillator you you might have done or you might you may be doing uh, the simple pendulum uh, experiments and so on where you are just mentioning about the uh, you are measuring the oscillation and so on so if you look at the harmonic oscillator the concept of the uh, vibrations are obtained from quantum mechanics and uh, if you do not have this we will not have a beautiful topic called spectroscopy okay so uh, spectroscopy uh, has got a lot of things with uh, quantum mechanics and that is a greater overlap whenever we say spectroscopy we need to say that the energy excitation and everything involves energy and uh, when you say energy we cannot avoid the schrodinger wave equation or the quantum mechanics so harmonic oscillator uh, gives a complete picture about um, the vibration nature of bonds now all these things are fine but very difficult to derive even the hydrogen atom derivation i know how many of you have derived that hydrogen atom derivation it will runs through pages and how about we will go ahead with uh, the complex systems let's say you have atoms of 100 200 take protein 10000 atoms when we will sit and solve we cannot solve that so we need to come up with certain techniques okay without compromising the results can i do something that uh, that uh, is possible with the help of approximation method it is a simple story that will uh, help you to understand the real picture here one particular person went to uh, uh, interview it was a bank interview a yeah, assistant manager job after completing uh, a msc and he went there and uh, as soon as his self introduction is over there was a question posted to him his, uh, that question is very simple like uh, tell me uh, eight trees are is it 23 then uh, okay you can go immediately the interview was over then about to leave oh eight trees are 24 uh, like uh, what did i do uh, i gave a wrong answer i will not get that to his surprise after a week he got a call letter from the bank and he has to join in the same bank where he attended the interview and uh, again fortunate to see the whole the same person who interviewed him he was a general manager there and after two months of becoming uh, a permanent employee then he went and uh, told him sir i want to ask one thing on that day of interview you asked 83 sir i gave a wrong answer very sorry but i think you didn't hear it properly so you gave me the job and i was just waiting for uh, this period so that my post is confirmed now i can tell uh, sorry sir uh, you didn't hear it properly and then the manager said no no i heard uh, properly you said 23 i know but i asked the same question to other 20 people you are the nearest correct answer so i gave this opportunity 
this is uh, like correlated with the approximation method without compromising uh, the results and more closer to the accuracy we can get certain things that is called the variation method and perturbation method just look at the definition variation method uh, it's a huge uh, definition but simple uh, thing is like you can have trial wave function you can have trial wave function and you need to uh, check with the energy obtained from trial wave function and you need to match let's say just read out that the method consists of choosing a trial wave function depending on one or more parameters and finding values of these parameters for which the expectation value of the energy i would say energy is the lowest possible the wave function applied by fixing a parameter to such value is then approximation to the ground state wave function and expectation value of the energy in that state is an upper bound to the ground state german ground state energy this is a definition but i know based on all the head tilts maybe i would better explain this again we we all uh, know about cinderella story okay and uh, uh, to make a long story short i would say that cinderella went to the party and after uh, you know reaching the time she thought that okay the uh, i need to move and in a hurry hurry she uh, left that uh, place and uh, during that time she left her one shoe there and uh, uh, like the prince uh, has taken that and after that what uh, he did he wants to find out who the girl is he doesn't know the name so he wants to check the shoe with all the people and eventually you know he got the right one cinderella okay this is very simple this is applicable to variation theorem because if you look at that variation theorem we can have psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 and so on psi n all these things are trial wave function okay this is a one trial wave function this is one trial wave function trial wave function and so on and what is a real system a real system is a big wave function or the energy we will say the energy if this is a case so with that wave function 1 we will check what is energy with wave function 2 what is energy wave function 3 what is energy wave function 4 what is energy which energy is closer to the energy of the original and that will be the best one in in other words we can say the shoe is here whose leg is perfectly fit into this shoe that will be the central law so this is a very simple example uh, to understand variation principle or variation theorem this has a great advantages in computational techniques where people used to calculate the molecular properties so variation theorem is very simple we can have n number of trial wave function all can apply and whoever is best will be the best wave function now moving on to the next one is perturbation theory perturbation the terms uh, indicates that disturbance when you have slight disturbance then how things will go so this is a equation here in the previous equation we worked with wave function because we want to know h psi equal to e psi so hamiltonian is a operator this is eigen value and this is the same now in the first case what we are doing we are playing with psi in the variation theorem psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 and so on here what we are going to we are refining the hamiltonian the operator because h psi is equal to e psi so here instead of playing with psi we can play with hamiltonian but the problem is the perturbation theory involves determination of eigen function and eigen values of the perturbed hamiltonian in terms of those of the unperturbed hamiltonian if you want to say that hamiltonian we need to have the unperturbed hamiltonian and the perturbation okay there are conditions are there the system differs slightly from the unperturbed system and the other thing like the wave function energy should be known for the unperturbed system okay example from spectroscopy we can say that the hydrogen atom is perturbed so nmr nmr spectroscopy is the application of perturbation theory and if you look at that simple harmonic oscillator is unperturbed system but in a real system harmonic oscillator is a perturbed system okay so uh, sorry harmonic oscillator is unperturbed system unharmonic oscillator is a perturbed system i would explain with this if we want to find out the formula for a circle 
or a rectangular square or a triangle we have the formula but can you predict the area of this particular diagram very tough right we need to fix the formula so the best thing is to get a quick value we know what is the circle is so we can fit this this is called a known hamiltonian zero a known function known hamiltonian and if you fix this only thing we need to account for the small disturbance this is called perturbation theorem small disturbance so when you have a complete picture of a known system unknown system can be found so hamilton this perturbation theory says that the hamiltonian of this system the system that we need to do is equal to hamiltonian zero this is hamiltonian zero because whose wave function and uh, hamiltonian is known plus what is given in the blue shape is hamiltonian dash and lambda is extension uh, the extent of the deviation from the original system so this is called perturbation theory very simple technique uh, and it has a huge advantage in practical applications now we saw about the small approximations variation and perturbation and if you look at that if you want to write the hamiltonian it's a big term when you think about two atom two electron two atom two electron you can see atom one atom two and sorry nucleus one nucleus two i'll say nucleus and electron one electron two if you look at that we can say that the hamiltonian associated with the energy of this atom this nucleus this nucleus so i'll just put this this nucleus this nucleus this is for the electron one this is for the electron two this is the interaction with one with the nucleus this is two with the nucleus and uh, you can have this electron with the b nucleus and this two electron with this and then you have a repulsion between um, the two electrons because it's same charge and repulsion between nucleus here and here so this is a huge term very difficult to carry on with this so approximation born and upper number came with the approximation let us see that electrons are very very um, small and it uh, if you compare that with the nucleus it is like 18 30 uh, uh, times uh, smaller uh, than the nucleus so we we can say that nucleus are not at all moving which is not good which is not true but we can approximate nucleus are not at all moving then these terms are vanished from the equation so the hamiltonian is very simple now considering only the electrons so this is uh, one of the uh, greatest step that has been taken uh, in the quantum mechanics okay now moving on to that of course the total system we consider the electrons and so on now the problem comes when you have different electrons multi electron systems that uh, came into picture now people thought that okay i have solved uh, i'll write here uh, i have solved this for hydrogen atom uh, psi uh, we can solve it for hydrogen atom let us say uh, psi 1 of 1 now i have hydrogen atom which has only one electron if i go for helium atom it's two electron uh um, then if i just move on to the other atom let's say carbon atom four electron and if you go to nitrogen atom it's seven electron so if we want to say psi of nitrogen then i can say one then two i'll say okay psi 3 psi 4 psi 5 psi 6 and psi 7 what i can do i can just go for the product of the one electron system that is the idea okay if this is one if like one chocolate is 2 rupees then what about five chocolates then we'll say okay five into 2 10 we can go for uh, the uh, product of that or we can say 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 this is also 10 so people thought that we can uh, go in that way but that is not possible so hartree came up with the expression no 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 we cannot use that so we can introduce self consistent field what he said psi is equal to phi 1s phi 2s phi 3s 
and so on s is for self consistent orbitals so the new term came into picture orbitals okay so r orbitals self consistent field orbitals now hartree hartree fock so this is uh, hartree and hartree fock said that okay you talked about orbitals orbital can accommodate only two electrons so if you say psi 1 the other one is also a psi 1 only it is not psi 2 because orbitals can take accommodate two electrons i can say put this then they said okay two orbitals uh, two electrons in one orbital and both electrons can have the spin so they put that a uh, dash over here which means one electron is up one electron is down this is a simplification that hartree made that so just to put a uh, put uh, things in proper context what is self consistent field and uh, this is a beautiful story that incident happened in the life of hartree and he started his work on self consistent field when he was uh, attending a lecture given by niels bohr so he was a mechanical engineer uh, hartree and uh, the father hartree uh, was uh, there as a professor in mechanical engineering and the son hartree Uh, was there at home and then he said hey there is a guy called uh, niels bohr who has done something with atomic model why don't you come and listen to that and he came unwantedly and sat at the last and he looked at that at that time niels bohr was uh, talking about the atom model and electrons people are saying this and that then he said that we have a concept called atoms uh, and we have a electrons into that and we do not know how we can fill the electrons and at that time he picked the hartree picked the idea okay let me go and do that now self consistent field uh, in a very simple term i'll say that ha hamiltonian and psi will give energy and psi okay e and psi now hamiltonian again we need to write the equation psi we need to predict now what he said okay let me do this way i will just refine the hamiltonian i'll just put x and with that i apply the hamiltonian uh, i apply the uh, psi i'll get some energy and i'll check with the original what is the real what is the real uh, energy if it is right or wrong we will check and if it is correct then it's okay if it is not correct then keeping the new hamiltonian and he will go for the new psi so keeping the hamiltonian he will refine psi he keeping psi he will refine hamiltonian this will go in a alternative way or in a iterated way so that at the end we will get a better solution and he got this idea when he was working uh, in the uh, army and during that world war and uh, he had a tough time with his uh, boss so the other uh, fellow came and asked that i want to take leave today what should i do if i go and uh, say this to my higher officials he will not allow me what should i do then hartree said okay so at one particular point you can say that you don't want to take flight craft at any time when you say that if you are mentally unstable you are not allowed to take the flight so you go to the higher official and say you are not mentally fit and then definitely he cannot say anything he cannot order you so he will give uh, leave he will permit you to stay in the camp you don't want to take the craft today then as per the hartree's advice he went and he approached and he said the same thing i am not mentally fit so i would i would not uh, taking the flight today then the higher official said wow that's good if you are mentally stable enough to tell that you are mentally unstable then you are stable so you have to take the flight that's what the thing happened and he applied the same thing here he took the hamiltonian and refined the psi and once the hamiltonian is used to refine the psi then again psi is refined to hamiltonian and this process is a cyclic process and that is why uh, we can get the self consistent field and uh, self consistent field orbitals this is a master stroke in computations before that people used to have lot of numerical calculations writing programs and so on actually this simple logic has solved lot of problems in computation so thanks to the father and son hartree and uh, uh, like say hartree fock just introduced the spin into the system i would say these are the developments that happen in over the years and 1960s the other uh, dramatic turnaround happened in the quantum mechanics is density functional theory 
in a very simple term we can say if we find out the electron density of a material we can predict any property that is the uh, one line story of density functional theory density as a functional and uh, the piece of work given by uh, walter cohen and john popel uh, eventually led them to get the nobel prize in 1998 and after 15 years of uh, spam again the prize given to computational chemistry in the year 2013 but th these three gentlemen shared martin kaplus uh, michel levet and uh, the washel these three people worked on developing the programs programs for uh, uh the proteins and complex chemical systems and uh, i was fortunate to work with uh, he is a nobel laureate and uh, the nobel laureate student is marcus moeli in switzerland and uh, i worked with him so i worked with a student of student of nobel laureate then theories in a big picture uh, we will say that the computational theory has started emerging right from the 1960s we have different techniques called force field quantum mechanics statistical mechanics and in quantum mechanics we have semi empirical ab initio density functional theory and compound methods all these things are the applications of quantum mechanics again let us not go into the detail i said cohen back cohen theorem in 1964 and uh, like variation principle how it is applied in density functional theory this is one of the uh, greatest applications uh, from the quantum mechanics these two are very very important in terms of calculations let us not worry about it and i would like to conclude something like this a density function theory can be used to predict structures to analyze the bonding patterns to predict and analyze spectra understand the basic concept and concept uh, complex concepts to understand the reaction mechanism to predict the properties of molecules to study the solvent effects and to design new molecules ultimately where experiment fails to explain certain observation phenomena definitely computational chemistry uh, chemistry will help us and the computational chemistry is a derivation of quantum mechanics uh, i didn't give a explanation or the examples for all those things even though i have all those things because that is too chemistry for you to digest and i would like to come conclude with this after being here sitting here i don't want this to happen when you go to heaven obviously of course everybody will go to heaven uh, uh, i'm sure and i still don't want don't understand quantum theory and if that happens i'll be very happy you should not tell that i don't understand quantum theory just devote your time go ahead and read and relish and enjoy quantum mechanics i dedicate this talk to my beloved teachers of st xavier's college polangote where i did my undergraduate that is a uh, you know the college where i learned the values Uh, so i uh, thank my teachers and for the dedication and motivation thank you for your kind attention this is a solve congress picture where eminent scientists almost all the people attended the conference are nobel laureates thank you thank you so much sir for your wonderful presentation um i will ask the students uh, to clear the doubts um, yeah. so yes. the students um, if you have any doubts you can clarify it now the floor is open for discussion if there is no doubts i can very well take that you have understood it uh, to the maximum extent okay uh, sir your presentation was uh, simply superb it was a fabulous one you have made the quantum mechanics a very interesting uh, subject so you have shown many videos pictures and even stories cinderella story and uh, all the uh, images you have shown it was uh, a uh, kindling our thoughts and uh, you have made the session very very interesting sir and our first semester students they are uh, doing uh, studying this quantum mechanics as a paper i hope the students they have got the whole gist of quantum mechanics all the fundamentals you have brushed and you have uh, explained it bit by bit uh, you have made it uh, something um, understandable even to the lay person in such a way your talk was there uh, so we are so happy about it sir and um, uh, uh, 
uh, the vote of thanks for this function will be uh, delivered by uh, Shakina of uh, second year BSc physics. It's been a very wonderful time spending with you all. It's a great opportunity for me uh, to express my heartfelt gratitude. First of all, I thank the Almighty God who poured His amazing grace upon us till the end of this program. I thank Dr. Vijay Salomon sir for your rich virtual presence and sharing his knowledge among us. After listening to his speech, I strongly believe that quantum physics will definitely have strong impact in all our future. Our endless efforts for organizing this program. Thank you, ma'am. I thank our heads of the department, Mrs. Jagati Jasmine, ma'am, and Dr. Ramila, ma'am, who did not fail to engage us with enlightening and educative programs. And I thank our enthusiastic and, and uh, encouraging staffs for their endless efforts in this program. Last but not the least, I thank all my co-students who maintained silence and was listening to all the humans with great interest. Thank you all once again. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful speech. Thank you. Shall we all stand and uh, sing the national anthem together? <laughs> ಜಾಗೆ <laughs> ಶುಭಾಶಿಷ್ಯ ಮಾಗೇ ಜಯ 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 ಜ